Hi, I'm John Kellogg. I serve as the director of Break the Cycle Global. So excited to be with you this evening. It's December the 29th, and I'll be doing videos uh, through most of this week, I think, getting you caught up on the amazing things the Lord is doing through us as a group, along with the organization in East Africa. You know, the Lord's made it really clear, even more so on this last trip, that our role is to, to identify, encourage, uh, and, and, and promote and bring forth leadership in East Africa to do the work of the ministry. You know, I see the effectiveness of those who were warriors and are now elders. As they speak to the warriors and the elders, they speak with an authority and from a, a, a different uh, perspective than I am able to. And so when we travel there, and I'm, tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit about a ministry trip uh, it, what I've found and I believe to be most effective is for us to be in that supporting role and let the brothers share their testimony even just the fact that they're there sharing has such impact uh, so <clears throat> I'll back up and say uh, tonight is a story about my birthday wish coming true which was to be able to get a solar kit for the Jesus film and so as a backpack that has a solar film in it that charges the battery. It had an amplifier, a projector, a SIM card with the Jesus film on it in Swahili, Trikana, Pakot, and Samburu. And so it was very exciting to be able to take that with me on this trip. The Lord used that to fulfill a dream that's been there for some years now. When I first went to Samburu seven, almost seven and a half years ago, met a man, some guru pastor, who said, John, nobody will take the gospel with me into the desert where my people are in the hardship areas. And I felt like the Lord said very clearly, John, I have sons in the desert, but who will tell them? Well, that began a journey. A year later, we went in um, by motorcycle. We carried our food and our tents and, and everything we needed. And when we exited, uh, a chief and elders from an area called Soradoru gave us five acres to begin a mission center. They were so impressed with the, with the work that we were doing. So that's another story I'll tell you a little further uh, in the week. But for tonight, I want to focus on the fact the Lord really, it's so exciting. He packaged it together around this Jesus film this time. What happened is, uh, all of a sudden there were pastors that Isaiah had known and been meeting with who were going individually as they could uh, into the interior but they just didn't, they didn't have what they needed to uh, have the maximum impact, let's say. Um, they don't have a lot in terms of personal means and they don't have, they're not very able to go very far because they don't have really vehicles that are, are made for that type of, uh, of, of travel. So on this trip, the Lord brought together five pastors and it's exciting when you know the backgrounds. One of them, lived on the streets in Nairobi as a street person uh, and a drunkard. Two of the others um, were big Samburu men and they're well known, had very, uh, were well known for their violence and their drunkenness. Um, so within the communities they had reputations when they were young men, but as they met Jesus and became believers, their lives have been radically changed. And so now it's, the people know them all over Samburu uh, by reputations. And then you find that there are clans that are um, families that have different members that settled in different parts of the desert. So anywhere we met, there was some relationship um, with the people where we were going. So the Lord brought these five men together whose hearts and passion are to take the word of, of Jesus to the desert, but to make disciples. And they were very clear about that, that they're not really into the hit and run deal. They, they really have a desire to, because they know their people and they know the culture, and they know that it takes more than just uh, an initial accepting of Jesus, but really they need discipleship to understand what is a kingdom of God culture versus what is a Sambura culture. And so it was exciting to travel with them. We took the vehicle that um, you all have made provision for over these last years. We finally got it all put together on this trip and uh, ready to go. Loaded these men up. We spent seven, about $700. We bought a couple hundred dollars of 
fuel. There was one other vehicle that went. And then we had to buy some food so that when we went into these groups of people, we, we carried with us what we needed so they wouldn't think that we had come to get something. But we always uh, went with something we could also uh, give. And then they would typically add, they would uh, give us one of their goats. They would slaughter a goat for us. Or I remember one elder came and, and gave us a gourd of milk uh, to add to what we had. So it was a beautiful time uh, to just see how um, these brothers, as we drove in, and you're seeing footage of, of driving. It was some pretty interesting driving for me. I'd never driven in in these extreme conditions before, but it, it was kind of fun, but it was uh, pretty interesting. And uh, But we, as we came in, so one village we came into, the elders were under a tree, and there was a police and another chief there. And what I discovered, that I would just stay in the vehicle, and a couple of the of the elders would go and speak to the group and what we found out is that the Moran or the warriors of the place where we were going to share and to show the Jesus film had just gotten back from a cattle raid. They had gone to another tribe and stolen a bunch of cattle and drift and, and had brought them back. So the police had found out what was going on and the chief from that area they knew they tracked where they had gone and so they were there to with this chief and, and these police to speak to the community leaders where we were headed uh, to make some kind of an arrangement so they wanted their cattle back and then they were trying to decide plus what so that's what we drove into so it was interesting we spent a couple days there um, as we uh, approached the larger camp um, and, and, and senior elder came and he knew Isaiah, uh, my friend. They had traded donkeys over the years and done work together that way. They invited us in. So then we were able to set up inside their camp and put our tents up there. And then I drove the Land Rover into the very center by where there was a big area where the elders would meet uh, in, in this sort of structure they had built. So we pulled the Land Rover in, and then we were able to put the, the uh, screen up on the side of the Land Rover. And then unfortunately, I'm not able to take pictures or video whenever we show this. It's obviously very dark outside, uh, but, but that's the time that everybody can gather together. And obviously, it's the best time to watch the film. But uh, we had several days of ministering there in the day and in the evening. And so some of the video clips I'll show you is when we were uh, ministering in the daytime, but it's just a beautiful thing to watch these five pastors um, just sharing the mic with each other and watching the people respond to them. And I was just so impressed that you have five leaders and yet they flowed together like it was a dance. It was just amazing. There was no fighting or anybody trying to be the voice. And uh, so we saw the Lord move. Uh, people came and asked for prayer. Um, I think our focus together, and we spoke about this as we debriefed afterwards, you know, it's exciting that when people come and they pray and ask Jesus uh, to come in their heart and to and, and, um, and make a commitment, but they're not understanding really that commitment, which I'm just going to say quickly, I'm not sure many in America understand really the transaction that's taking place. You know, he gave his life. For, and it's a free gift, but he, it is an exchange life, and he's asking us now to lay down our lives. Uh, so what that looks like for you, again, I'm just believing that the Lord, between now and the end of the year, as you seek him, he'll give you a very specific assignment to understand what does that look like for us. Back to these men, one of the things they're aware of is that the culture and traditions are very deep in the Samburu. So they know that there's a strong need to continue to counsel. And a quick example is my dear brother Isaiah. Last fall, when I was with him, uh, there's a ceremony that happens within the Samburu culture about every 15 years, and it's a circumcision. And so what happens is the boys um, that have grown through that period from all over the whole, really a whole country, um, converge and it's several years of, of ceremony and things. It's a big buildup. 
but it's a very spiritual experience. And uh, so it was time for that to happen, for circumcision to happen, and the boys then become warriors, and then the other age set will move into becoming elders, get married, and, and so on. Well, <clears throat> the challenge is Isaiah knows because, and all these men that I was with, all these pastors, had been warriors. They'd gone through that process. And they knew that it's a spiritual experience, but not necessarily a Holy Spirit experience. So he, for his boys, said, no, we're not going to do the traditional because I know what that's about. We are Christians first and Samburu second. It's powerful. He will say that from his mouth to other elders. I'm a Christian first and a Samburu second. But he has such a testimony and he's such a strong leader in this community that they accept it. So God, again, God has given him a witness and a, and a, a life that shows something that I can't. I'm just, I, I don't, I'm not coming from that culture. So I'm just excited that us together, those of us here in the U.S. that are participating as a Christian community on this side to support the Christian community on that side to further advance the kingdom and create Christ-centered community is just a beautiful way that the Lord has given us uh, the ability to minister together. So uh, I just wanted to share with you how exciting the Jesus film is a great tool and the Lord somehow just brought all of this together on this trip. And now the going forward plan, we sat down and said, let's have a strategy. If our goal is really to make disciples, and that was their heart, they were the ones saying that to me as well. Uh, then let's have a strategy. Where are we going? Why are we going there first? How are we going to follow up? And what does a budget look like? What do we need to take with us? And so what our goal is, is that as the Lord will provide, and so I'm, I'm laying this out to you all, is that next year our goal would be each month to go for one week into the interior. It's about $700 for that trip, and that's Gas, you know, we spent several hundred dollars on fuel. Um, there's some maintenance that is going to be happening along the way, uh, and then really just the food stuffs uh, that that would would go along. And honestly, um, we're giving a small amount, forty dollars, to each of the pastors for that week to leave with their families. I've visited some of the families, and if they just literally wouldn't have anything to eat uh, if if we didn't provide. These men have really given their lives, uh, and uh, though they will garden, um, Isaiah fixes pumps for, to, for a living, um, so they have some things that they do, but they take away from their ability to do other work in order to do this. So it's a small uh, acknowledgement or appreciation on our part. So I ask you to consider joining us this next year uh, as we continue to advance the kingdom of God in East Africa in the hard places in the desert. Well, let me pray. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, we just thank you so much for your great love for us, for your life in us. Thank you for the honor of, of supporting those that you've called in East Africa to spread the gospel of the kingdom of God into the hard places. Thank you for their heart not desiring big churches and big to do and big vehicles and big everything, but their heart is to go into the very hard places. And so Lord, we thank you that you make provision for your vision and that you will provide for this next year for us to be able to continue to go in on a monthly basis and advance the kingdom of God in East Africa. Thank you for these men, for these pastors. Lord, I ask a blessing on them this year, that you'll make provision for them individually, that their families will be able to continue to uh, eat and to improve their situation. And Lord, I thank you for all of those who are watching this video uh, here in the U.S. and abroad. Father, we give ourselves to you. We do see it's an exchange life. We thank you for giving that the Son of God became a Son of Man so that sons of men could be sons of God. And as sons of God, we yield ourselves to you and say, have your way. Lord, we just thank you that you are creative in, in, uh, in every way. And so I know that you will give each of us an understanding of a particular assignment, whatever that looks like for each one of us, that we can be intentional 
in advancing your kingdom here on the earth. May your kingdom come, your will be done in our lives today here on the earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Thank you so much. Excited to speak with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.